Hey folks, it's Leah. Thank you for joining me. We're going to talk about human sacrifice today. There is so much to talk about, about the history of soap, but I'm going to sort of talk about the origin and just very general ideas around soap and where it comes from and how it's helped us as humans. Also what led to its discovery as in like what are the basic chemical elements of soap. So if you are familiar with the pH scale you have a scale that starts with one and goes to 14 and then right in the middle you have seven and seven is considered a neutral pH. So water is seven for example. Then you have things that are above seven and those are considered alkaline or basic. Salt. Lye. Lye is actually technically a salt and below seven things are acidic. Lemon juice, vinegar, sugar. A lot of the foods that we can are extremely acidic and that's because bacteria doesn't like the acidic environment so it keeps us safe. So how we figured out to make soap is that you can take something that is alkaline and you can add it to an oil and it will create a soap. That's sort of what we've been doing since maybe not the beginning of time, but the beginning of complex civilization, let's say. As far back as Babylon, we have recipes like basically etched into <laughs> history that say like, you know, combine this much oil with like this much wood ash, what's called pot ash. It's called that because the pot is short for potassium. Pot ash has been used for a really long time to make soap because it's so simple. You just have to burn some wood and the wood ashes soaked in water will give you potash. There's this whole story about how soap came about because we used to do human sacrifices and we would like, you know, burn the people and the fats from their body would combine with the ashes and then we would dump all of it in the river to get rid of it. And then down river, people would realize that their clothes would be like, cleaning better because there was soap in the water. And I mean, it's an interesting story, but that's not actually what happened. We've been making soap for pretty much as long as we've been writing things down. We have recipes for soap written down. Now through the ages, we've sort of had the ebb and flow of, do we want to use soap? <laughs> and that is a totally different question. The favoring of soap, we're talking about a lot of different factors. So like, is it just considered elegant? And so only like, rich people have access to soap? Is it considered more like a bare necessity? Like today we're like, we're like, no, no, no. Like everyone needs soap. Even though we've realized basically since forever that water will clean us, not everyone has a lot of access to water. Egypt has had soap for a really long time. You know, the ancient Egyptians used soap, but they also didn't have a ton of water. You know, if you weren't right on the Nile, there wasn't just billions of lakes everywhere you could just jump in and get clean. There is a certain amount of needing to rely on soap to get clean in some places more than in others. And I think it's really cool that when we think about soap, we tend to think about basic hygiene now. And I think that's important. And I think that's really helped. We have a lot of times throughout history where like either soap would just fall out of favor or people would just not have access to soap. Poor people during the plague would just like, they'd be living in slums. They'd be all over each other. You know, they, there'd be a bunch of people crammed into a tiny space. They'd be living in their own filth because of course plumbing and like sewage treatments stuff wasn't really a thing then and they'd just be getting sick and they'd be dying so it's like oh that's that's no good so it's nice now that we really consider soap to be like a bare necessity that you know everyone should have access to and this is this is a really important part of staying safe staying clean staying around other people in any capacity and being able to not get sick or make other people sick all the time but among soap makers we still consider some of the best soaps to be uh, original soaps so the aleppo soap which is just thousands of years old derived from primarily olive oil simple classic soap and olive oil is considered the gentlest oil for for soap making it's really nourishing and conditioning for the skin that's been made for thousands of years and i think it's really nice to see that we're sort of honoring these traditions and not barging in and being like we know more now let's like change everything it's like no no, no. like they knew a lot then too i think that's pretty cool you know i think there's a lot to be said for the ways in which soap lets us live together. I think it's not a coincidence that for as long as we've been living in civilizations, 
in like big communities, we've been making soap. When the pandemic first hit, there was this video that Alton Brown put out around proper hand washing technique. He said something that I thought was really interesting. He called soap the yardstick of civilization. And I think that's actually really astute. I think it's a really good observation. You know, soap is something that makes us able to be around each other without getting each other sick, without um, <laughs> driving each other off because we smell so bad. <laughs> you know, this is, this is something that allows us to be together in close quarters and I think has really facilitated us growing as a society together in these big civilizations. And I think honestly, without soap, we wouldn't be able to do that because we'd all be killing each other with disease. So it's, it's, uh, I think that was actually a really good observation. And I, uh, I like that soap brings us together. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up because it tells YouTube that you think we're cool. It really helps us out and be sure to subscribe. There's a little button down there. And also there's these other videos that I've linked. So check them out too for more info on soap and watching us make soap and so on. And we'll see you in the next one. Well, that, that was involuntary.